8mm movie films. Many of you might remember these, and many of you probably don't. These are the silent kind. There were two kinds of 8mm. There was the regular 8mm, like I, you see here. And then there were the Super 8s. Look, looks almost like it, only the hub is bigger. The films were the same size, actually, but the pictures on the Super 8s were big, bigger because the sprocket holes were smaller. The sprocket holes in the 8mm films were larger, making this picture smaller. <laughs> That's how it worked. Uh, many memories I have as a kid watching these with my parents and my siblings, and they're all... A lot of our memories are stored on these silent old movies long before VHS, video camcorders, and whatever you got nowadays, like what I'm recording with now, the HD flash type of video camcorders. So I'm going to take you on a little journey backward and show you some movies and the equipment that we played them on from yesteryear. This is Retro Heaven. See you in a second. Ampro, that's A-M-P-R-O, from the Ampro Corporation, <laughs> model number A8, it's like 14134, it's kind of inscribed in there a little, it's weird, so it's kind of hard to read. This is what I used to watch whole movies with, me and my parents and my siblings used to gather around, of course we had television back then. <laughs> But this, we didn't have uh, sound movies of ourselves, so we had to rely on old uh, 8mm films such as this. And by the way, this is the same film format that was used to film the assassination of JFK, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. It wasn't Abraham Zapruder's intention to film it, but that's how it happened. He's the only one that was actually able to catch it when it happened, and all that professional, all those professional cameras and stuff missed it. <laughs> mind-boggling to think of that. So I'm going to thread a film here. This is of my sister's wedding from 1972. This isn't as old as some of those that you were looking at down there, but or I was looking at down there. But you gotta take the film, you put it through the sprocket here, line the holes up with the sprocket, you gotta loop the film. It's a little hard to get in there right. Do this again here. It's stuck. Come on, you. And you gotta have a loop in there, and it's not in there right yet. Okay, get in here. Get in here. There. It's still not in there, right? <laughs> I have to edit this video, I guess. Get this filming right now. Come on. No, no, I lost the loop. Got to have a loop on top and on the bottom. See that on there? I'm probably blocking it. Okay. The loaded film on an old eight millimeter projector. See the loop there? Down there and down there. It's and you thread it onto the take up reel down below. The uh, on and off switch is not working so I had to rely on a what do you call it? A, a bar, an electronic bar that controls all kinds of uh, different uh, electrical things here so I'm just going to flick that switch instead. And away we go! That's my dad, and that's me on the left when I was about 13. <laughs> Just before the wedding started, my sister getting married. That's me in the tux. 
But the only time you'll ever see me was dressed up. And there's the happy couple. My sister Vani and my brother-in-law Doug. He's now the happy collector of old cylinder players and 78s, that kind of stuff. Which you see now in one of my other videos. 1972, September. Uh, the happy couple. At the cake, at, is at the reception with the cake. That's me roaming around the back. <laughs> My uncle shot these on his camera and then handed the film over to my parents. That's my other uncle serving bar. <laughs> my brother. And that's yours truly again. Striking a silly grin. The Ampro. 8mm projector. Oh, what memories this brings up. Here's how it looks on the back, three toggle switches, and one of them's broke, I've replaced them before on this thing. And here's the motor area, and there's the lamp house, where an extremely hot lamp exists and burns, and needs to be cooled sufficiently in order to last. They were very hot running projectors. And here's the Bell & Howell Sportster 8mm camera that was used to film all the films except for the one that you were viewing earlier because it was done on my uncle's camera, but it was the same type, 8mm. Here's all the... that's the footage dial and the speed at which you would... Uh, whatever speed you desired the less, the more film you would use, the slower the picture would go, the movie would go, and vice versa. So, a lot of times you just keep it at 16, so you just keep, put as much on a 50 foot roll as you could, because that's all you got was 50 feet per roll, and it was like, I don't know, five, six bucks to, to buy the film, and then you had to develop it too, you know. Pretty nifty, I had a lot of fun playing with this when I was a kid. My dad did before I was born, too. It's a very sentimental piece. I'm going to put this up to... That's the little hole you have to look through in order to... When you're taking the movies. And it's impossible to believe that. I used to stick my eye through to try to see things through that. And I'm still trying to... I'm putting the camera lens up to this. So maybe you might be able to see what it was like. To take movies with this thing, oh, it looked a lot better than that. <laughs> Again, this is the type of uh, camera Abraham Zabruder had when he filmed the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Very simple, but that was probably one of the most valuable films in the world for the longest time, because he was the only one who captured it on film. With all that professional news media around, he's the one who captured it. Unwillingly, of course. Well, I hope you enjoyed my little presentation of yesteryear's video equipment and how it runs and how it works and what I used to watch when I was a kid. And now I got these, even though I have all these on video, I'm going to sit and watch them old-fashioned style. But now I'm in the mood for Retro Heaven. I'll see ya. <laughs> this is Retro Heaven. Ed Stevens here. Hope you enjoyed this. See you later.